This is Tom Bernanke, and did you sprain your ankle, break your ankle? So we're talking about your tibia, your fibula, or any foot bones. We're gonna be giving you the 25 best tips. This is the stuff that I've had thousands of my patients do. This is what helps. It's gonna help you with a quicker recovery time. It's gonna make sure you don't have long-term problems afterwards. It's gonna make sure you don't have arthritis, weakness, stiffness, and we're starting right now. So when you sprain your ankle or when you break your ankle, the number one and most important thing you need to do is get the proper diagnosis. I see people suffering for months and months and months with the wrong diagnosis. They have a lot of pain. It's not normal to suffer with a foot injury for more than three to six months or so. The recovery time for one of these broken ankles or sprained ankles should be about two to three months and you should be doing significantly better. If your sprained ankle or broken ankle is not doing better, check down in the show notes. We have some guides to help with these recovery times because that's not normal to be taking so long to recover from these things. If you broke your ankle, if you broke a bone in your foot, if you have a stress fracture, get checked out by a podiatrist. So number one, make sure it's a cause make sure you get an x-ray make sure you get it evaluated because you have to be treating the right thing if it's broken or it's significantly sprained it's going to be swollen you're going to have a hard time moving it it's going to look like a grapefruit it's going to be swollen around the ankle the nerves will hurt they will throb for the first few days or a week or two you will have a lot of pain you're not going to be able to put a lot of pressure on it the recovery time is, I usually tell people, for the first two to three days, you can't tell anything at all. Your nerves throb, they ache at night, everything's swollen. As about a week or two go by, the swelling starts to calm down. Really, this period's about one to two weeks on average. Now, the bone healing, if you did break a bone, it takes about, I always tell people on average, six weeks for the bone to heal. Uh, about 50%. So it takes six weeks of protecting it. And most people don't protect it properly. So that's the problem. But if you protect it properly by about 12 weeks, so that's three months, we're talking like 75% bone healing. By like six months, you're talking like 90%. And by one year, that's when you're at that perfect 100%. But the beauty is, you need to rehab those tight sore muscles. You need to get that flexibility back, that soreness. So that's a long time to recover. So we gotta make sure that you're doing all the right stuff during this time period. So at the beginning, number one, when you go see your doctor, you might need medication. So that first day or two of broken foot or ankle are brutal. They are throbbing, they are aching. So you might need some pain medications. Now, if you don't wanna do that, anti-inflammatories like uh, ibuprofen or Aleve can be good. Now. There's some studies that say that this anti-inflammatory can slow down your bone healing. Realistically, we're talking like a tiny little amount. And if that means you can sleep the first day or two, do that. Um, I would always recommend get your pain under control. Most people are not gonna get addicted with a day or two, but if you're okay without the pain medication, go without it. Medications never uh, helped if you don't need them. Rest, make sure you rest it at the beginning. Don't walk on your foot, don't injure it. Let that swelling get down. Ice, for 20 minutes at a time, you can put ice on your ankle or the broken bone area. It will cool that pain down. So 20 minutes, a few times per day, don't leave it on there overnight because you'll freeze your skin and you could cause like freezer burn on your leg. Don't do that. These pain relief ice uh, compression devices, you know, you put some ice in there, uh, you can put some water, you can pump this thing up. These have great ratings. You can see right there, people really enjoy them. But again, can an ice bag do this and can elevating it on a pillow do this? Absolutely. If you have a ton of money to spend and you wanna do everything possible to get better quicker, this could be a helpful device. Compression. At the beginning, an ACE wrap can be pretty good. You can wrap the ACE bandage around your ankle. You can do that very gently. You know, that's not the most important thing in the world, but it can help. There's something I do in clinic called an Una boot. So I gently apply it so all that swelling calms down and you can really get that initial recovery time. That's one thing you can do to help the recovery time a little bit earlier is that compression. And then elevate. You know, when you're laying at bed at night, put it up on your pillow. And if it's higher than your heart, the swelling will come down out of the ankle. But the fact that you broke it, it will swell. You're not gonna get rid of it completely. Can you drive? The official answer is no, but the reality is, if you're wearing a boot or a cast, 
and you can't bend your ankle to push on the gas pedal, it's not a good idea to drive. But if you are not wearing a boot, and, or if it's on your left foot, then you probably can drive. Um, legally here in our area, I talked to some police officers and uh, some attorneys about this. The reality is it's kind of a gray zone. No one did, can determine exactly how injured you can be, but if you don't feel safe uh, driving and there's nothing restricting your foot, and I've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of patients do it, I've never really heard of anybody getting in trouble, but technically it's a gray area, and if you wanna be safe, don't do it. And I'm not a lawyer, so don't take that as legal advice. Can I walk on my ankle? The answer is, depending on the break, um, you can, but if it's an ankle, if it's your leg, probably not a good idea to walk on. Now, what is really important is products. So usually I don't push the products, but in this case, um, you know, if you get a surgical shoe or crutches, these things suck. People tilt over, they get hurt all the time. What you wanna do is get yourself a good knee scooter or an eye walk or a wheelchair if needed. And I'm gonna show those to you now. Knee scooters are amazing. I love these things. Look at, they're not the most expensive in the world. If you have a broken leg that's potentially keeping you off work, you want to heal as quick as possible. $118 or whatever this is at the time of your watching is well worth it. Almost every single patient thought it was well worth it. So the reality is you can use it to get around inside the house. It's easy to maneuver. They can pack up, fold up into your car. You don't have to go extreme unless you're, you know, 300 plus pounds. These are great devices right here that can work really well. The iWalk can be very effective. Realistically, I don't have a ton of patients that use these. You can see the rating is pretty good, but not great. Some people rave about it. They love this thing, but other people, they're like, hey, doc, I fell over. So just be aware if your balance isn't great. Some people love it, especially young patients like my 20 year old patients. They love this thing. But otherwise, uh, you can see that's kind of the reviews. So the scooters kind of stink in some areas. They have a hard time getting up, but this thing can be very, very effective in a lot of other areas. So the iWalk, I really enjoy it, but it's for a healthy, athletic, well-balanced person, not for an older, larger, stiffer person. Depending on your mobility, look at a wheelchair is not that much more. It's actually cheaper than the iWalk. You know, you can get some on sale. And so if you need one, and you have a family member that has a hard time getting you around, get the wheelchair. These can be very, very effective. Make sure you measure it for your size. See, this one's about 250. If you're larger, you might need more. Uh, but consider the wheelchair, you know, it's a very strong option. Crutches in general, you can see the nicer, well-reviewed ones right here are actually more expensive than a knee scooter or an iWalk. Yeah, you might need them, but in general, the cheaper crutches that you get the ER are horrible. They hurt your armpits. Nobody actually uses them. They lead to a ton of re-injury in my opinion. And from what I see, uh, get the knee scooter, um, you know, keep weight off of it, get a good boot. The crutches, you're going to walk on it because it's just so hard to use. And again, all my favorite stuff is down in the show notes. So uh, right below the video but let me know what you hate and what works well for you. Number two products are a boot versus a cast. If I don't really trust the patient, and this is uh, a lot of times in the ER, they'll put you in a splint or a uh, cast, and that's to prevent you from walking. When you're swollen, it's not a good idea in my eyes at the beginning, that's where an air boot can be very helpful. A walking boot should be put on in a comfortable way. So there's the short boot and the tall boot. I always recommend the tall boot, especially if it's your ankle, it keeps you more stable. Uh, and I'm gonna show you some of my favorites in a second, but basically you undo the straps, take the top off, and there's a little instruction guide and a pump. So an air cast uh, has a bladder inside there. So the idea is up here, the plastic that I'm showing, you wanna make sure that the padding's over the plastic because that plastic can cut your calf muscle. And you wanna make sure your toes fit in there. So I always recommend getting some socks. You could even put on a compression sock, but at the beginning, this is gonna be really tough. If you're too sore, don't force a compression sock on there. I'm talking after a couple weeks. You could even put a nice soft, a thick sock in there because that could prevent the rubbing against some of the hard plastic. Sometimes the air bladder and that padding is not supportive enough. 
I personally love an insole in there as well. So not at the beginning and especially not if you have an unstable fracture, but towards the end of the boot wearing, a good supportive insole can keep your foot straight, especially with an ankle for, uh, sprain rather than a fracture. But if it's more of a fracture that's unstable, then you want to pump it up as much as possible. You'd want to do that anyway and you want to keep off of it. But as it starts to feel better and your doctor gives you a thumbs up, you'll have a little bit more comfort with all of this stuff in there. So this does a pretty good job. Make sure it fits properly. This one's a little too small for me, but it's the one I've shown the demo on, but an insole compression sock and a nice cushion sock. Now I'm going to show you some of my favorite air boots uh, or medical walking boots. Uh, and I have some guides on how to use them. But what you also want to do is on your other foot on the opposite side is get an even up to hold that foot up. This will save your back from getting thrown out. Your hips will feel better. Your thighs will feel better. A walking boot is the way to go. Instead of that surgical shoe, you could see a nice walking boot. Make sure around the top margins, you have some nice padding. That's the real benefit. Cause if you're walking for a long period of time, that's going to dig into your skin and that could be dangerous. So that padding can be very beneficial. So I link down to my favorites. I also have guides on how to choose your walking boot tips for putting it in. So check down below and that can be very helpful for your walking boot or for showers. Take a look at the shower bag. This seals around above your knee. This can be very effective. So these are very, very effective. I, I actually really like these things, you know, just be aware if it leaks in there and you're wearing a cast, you probably should call your doctor or podiatrist immediately and let us know. We'll probably have to change your cast. That's the risk. It might even be worth getting, you know, a garbage bag over your foot, then putting this thing on over it would be my recommendation. Look at price isn't horrible. You might even want to get two of these to be extra safe. So the big thing with the broken bones is blood clots. Broken bones do elevate your risk for blood clots, especially in this uh, climate with vaccines and a lot of injections and a lot of pills like birth control pills and stuff. All these things are associated with a risk of blood clots um, in studies, you know, so basically a lot of things could boost your risk for blood clots. Taking a baby aspirin or if you have higher risk factors like age or history of clots or on some of these medications, you might want to take something stronger, but talk to your primary care doctor or your podiatrist regarding this. But after surgery, we'd go something even stronger than uh, aspirin. Disability paperwork. So if you're working, a podiatrist like myself or your orthopedic doctor can write you a letter and get you off work. So the reality is, if you need to stop working because you have a broken ankle, we can get you off and don't feel guilty. This is a real disorder. So this is a medical emergency for you. Vitamins. So here's the big thing. When you have a broken bone, you stop moving as much. So the big thing is vitamin D, especially in Michigan, like something like 80 to 85% of people are deficient. I take a 5,000 unit. Um, every day during the winter. If you're not getting sunlight, if you're at a place like Florida and you're getting sunlight, you might be in good shape, but vitamin D is huge. I take a daily multivitamin as well. There's a lot of studies on like vitamin C, uh, other vitamins, zinc, a lot of different stuff. A daily multivitamin will help you out with that, you know, but vitamin D is definitely the big one. Number two, protein powder. So uh, like isolate whey protein. If you're not eating uh, healthy, you know, clean up that sugary food, clean up that junk, make sure you get enough protein. If you can eat healthy meats or healthy vegetables and you're getting your daily protein through legumes, through vegetables, that's probably the number one thing. But if you're not, get yourself some protein powder in the meantime. That has been associated with wound healing and bone healing. Make sure you're getting enough sleep. So find yourself a good bed uh, that you can get to easily. So for example, if your bed's upstairs uh, and you have to go up and down stairs, that could be dangerous. I've had patients move a bed onto a ranch level or their first floor while they have, you know, their broken ankle. So figure out your sleep, you know, get a shower chair, um, get a bench to sit on. Um, make sure to put your morning stuff like your deodorant, your toothbrush next to your bed so you don't have to move around a lot. Make sure you have like a Netflix subscription or Amazon Prime subscription so you can watch some movies. I'm watching some good ones right now. I'm into the new Lord of the Rings show. I think the new uh, prequel to uh, Game of Thrones is pretty good too, but that's wasting time. That's not a tip. Although make that tip 26. 
as that initial six weeks go by, you want to get yourself an ankle brace. So ankle braces are great. I like number one, compression braces, and number two, lace up ankle braces. Uh, these are very, very good. I go over my guide for best ankle braces, but at the beginning you want something stiffer, like a McDavid lace up ankle brace, or uh, stuff down in the show notes are my favorite. I won't spend too much time on that here. So ankle braces can work really well too. Once you start getting out of the boot, using one of these, uh, I always like the Zenith brand right here. You could see a lot of great reviews. Uh, you know, as you start working through these, I like McDavid as well. McDavid's fantastic. So these lace up ankle braces, make sure you have a roomy enough shoe. Uh, you can put your foot in it on top of an orthotic and a shoe. They will hold you pretty stable. They're not quite as good as a cast or a boot, but once you get to that four to six week range and your doctor gives you the okay, these ankle braces can be very, very effective. And down below, I link my favorite ankle brace uh, recommendation guide. These are considered ankle braces, but realistically, see something like that, that's pretty good, like one of those plantar fascia socks or these types of braces. Like look at this, $13 for ankle compression. Um, once like six weeks or so go by, this is a very good choice. You know, these are very well reviewed. I would probably get something like this at about, you know, as you start going past that initial couple weeks of pain, uh, compression socks can work really well. Compression ankle socks. So I love compression socks. So at like six, seven, eight weeks, compression socks can be really good at keeping that swelling down. Take a look at these compression socks. There's little ones. Uh, there's dressy ones. Uh, then there's the 20 to 30 millimeter one. So take a look at these. These are 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury right here. That's probably stronger than you need. And you don't really need a prescription for these because take a look here. I'll save an extra 5%, but already $15 for three pairs. That's a pretty good deal. It's like $5 per pair. That'll easily do, one time buy get you through everything. You don't need a prescription really. So you could tell right here, these are great compression socks. You can even get them a little bit weaker. I would recommend getting them weaker to start with. You can see there's also a lot of women's pairs right here. So these are pretty nice looking socks. You don't have to go quite 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury. You could go a little bit weaker, like 15 to 20 is probably a better range, like right here. That's probably a little bit more comfortable and I would recommend starting with that. Great shoes, great orthotics. Let me show you something. So take a look here. When you walk, look at how much your foot collapses. But in an orthotic, look, it's not collapsing at all. Not collapsing there, but watch this. Look at how much that collapse. Your ankle has to twist, that's called overpronation. An orthotic will cushion you and stop that overpronation. So at the beginning, you wanna wear a maximalist shoe, like a Hoka or something like a Brooks Beast. My favorites are down below, a Brooks Aerial for women and then you wanna get an orthotic in there. And then you want an ankle brace on top of that. But great shoes, great orthotics, that's gonna make a big, big difference. And it forces you to walk straight so you're not adjusting and taking pressure off your legs. That's a big recovery time during that six to 12 week process. These Hoka shoes are considered recovery shoes. This price is a little bit outrageous, but down in the show notes, you'll see some different prices that can be a little bit better. Uh, but basically this is considered a great recovery shoe. It's very cushioned. You can see just how much foam is there. That's an, that's an insane amount of foam in there. And you can see they have a lot of different colors and stuff. So you can see what those look like, but Hoka is a great recovery shoe. So you can take a look at these two. These are called Brooks Beast. They're a little bit expensive, but I'm currently wearing these right now. This is a great supportive shoe. So if you like Brooks, Brooks are amazing too. I'm a big, big fan of the Brooks Beast. Adrenaline is pretty good as well. You can see ratings are excellent. The Brooks Ariel right here, this is the woman's version of the Beast. So very, very supportive shoe. You can go on the Brooks website as well or your lo local running shoe store. That can work out really well. Home slippers are really effective as well. So I'll show you my favorite home slippers there. So UFOs, Hoka Slides, these are considered recovery sandals. You could see right here, you know, I guess they have the knockoffs of the Hoka's, but you can see these are a little bit overpriced, but what happens is go on the Hoka website, don't get them off Amazon. They're like 55 bucks on the Amazon website. These are some pretty good supportive sandals as well. Uh, if you look up the brands, um, Spenco, Vionic, these sandals can be really good, but 
something very very well cushioned like this can be extremely effective in your recovery phase the next one is you want to see your podiatrist so keep following up because at the beginning the emergency room is just going to give you a boot until you're a little bit better but what happens is when i look at your hips your knees your calf muscles your hamstrings your lower back you're going to be off balance because you're going to be favoring one foot your calf will be weaker your ankle will be weaker this is the key right here whenever somebody hits that six to twelve week mark and they're not following up with their podiatrist regularly they start to get stiffer they start to develop scar tissue from not moving those muscles i see this so so commonly broken feet broken ankles broken legs broken hips broken knees this is really where podiatrists come in handy you know the emergency room can diagnose and x-ray that initial fracture but where i see people are those chronic problems that are not getting better what i'm showing right here is a frozen water bottle so right here i use the frozen can be careful not to freeze a can because that can explode on you but i'm just rolling it on my tight ligaments on the bottom of my foot the tight ligaments on the, my heel the back of my heel this is a frozen ice bottle so it's called the cryosphere not the greatest for the foot which is what i'm showing here but it's actually pretty good for your calf muscle for your hamstring you can use these rubber balls with soft rubber spikes and you can stand on this i'm showing you just with my foot right here but you're going to get stiff through your arch through your calf muscle so i'm just showing a couple different ones but the idea is here you're going to be sore you're going to be stiff there's going to be a lot of scar tissue built up in your arch so gently massage it ice it and then do a gentle stretch to loosen it up the thing is you're going to be very stiff you're going to be very tight you're going to be very sore to start off your post rehab process so once you get out of the boot you have to gently massage and you have to gently stretch so you can use a towel or a stretch band these can be extremely extremely effective i'm a big big fan of doing these as it can get you great gains in the first six to twelve weeks the next thing you want to do is you want to identify the tight stiff sore muscles and the first thing you want to do is pain control i'm not just talking about medications i'm talking about creams so you want to put anti-inflammatory creams like voltaren on there you want to put biofreeze like creams loosen up those sore muscles and as that pain goes down with icing with creams you can start to flex it and move it better and you start to get more equal if you were to run immediately coming out of your boot you would look like this see how these ankles are buckling in and these feet are turning out this is a stiff hamstring stiff calf muscle this is usually what i see immediately after someone has come off of an injury or has had stiffness for a very very long time you're not going to get a lot of relief just starting to walk around normally but take a look at this guy he's flexible through his hips his hamstrings his calf muscles see how the feet are pointing straight they're not twisting out the knee is not twisting in this is where you want to get to you want to be perfectly symmetrical so take an example here the left foot can't bend up as much as the right foot see that difference so it has to twist out see that external rotation there that's what you want to avoid see the right foot's turning up here the right foot can bend past 90 degrees and that means the hamstring is going to be looser too see that difference right there so the left foot is going to have to turn out throwing my body weight onto the right foot so when you get up in the mornings you want to loosen up so see i rotate my ankles a little bit get that blood flowing that's why your feet ankles hips and calf muscles hurt in the morning you want to warm them up you want to put some creams on them you want to massage them and i'll show you some massage in a little bit but then you want to use a towel to stretch it we're talking 15 to 30 seconds this is such a huge component of recovering from your broken ankle or sprained ankle that if you're not doing this this is going to be the real problem of debility in the future you know so another thing you want to do is see stretch kind of your butt muscles your hamstrings so uh, this is a more advanced thing if you have a back problem don't push against your knees you know start out gently start out with some physical therapy but the idea is you want to stretch your plantar fascia your hamstrings your hips so see right now i'm stretching the inside of my thighs that's my groin muscles this is something called an ankle slant board and i linked to some of them below but see right here this starts at 15 degrees 
and see been able to touch the ground there that's 15 degrees but right there that's now 20 degrees so maybe after one week of you know massaging loosening up using creams i loosen up there now i'm up to 25 now week four maybe i'm up to 30 degrees see the progress i'm making and now maybe i'm at 40 degrees see the bend through my ankle there that's the point you want to get to make progress the next thing then is as you start to maneuver a little bit better what starts to happen is you can start to massage. So I love to use a massage roller stick, a foam roller, a massage gun, uh, a foot massager. All these things really help. After your pain is relieved, there's a lot of evidence towards massaging. So I like foam rollers. You know, these are like $10 on Amazon or your local Walmart. So to get your glute muscles, so the top of your hamstrings or your glutes, I like to just roll like this while I'm watching TV. So see, I'm getting all those thick knots out of my hamstring right there or my butt muscles. This is really where I like that foam roller. I don't like it on my lower back and for that's for the butt and for the hamstring i love the massage roller stick so for the outside of my calves my calf muscles my hamstrings the massage roller stick is amazing i really like this thing it's really cheap most people can afford this thing you know in america it's under ten dollars if you're struggling loosen up that stiff tightness you know you can use it on your plantar fascia your calf muscles the front of your leg if you want to use gravity see i'm showing you this uh, here uh, bent over but see standing you can just use your foot and lean your body weight it shouldn't bruise up but we're talking like 30 seconds loosen up that fascia and then as your pain's gone as your stiffness is gone and what happens is if you're having a hard time if for example you tore your achilles tendon if you have stiffness through your ankle that's just not getting better I love to use shockwave therapy. So I'm a huge, huge fan of shockwave therapy. I had a guy who ruptured both Achilles tendons and he was going to some of the best surgeons in the world. And realistically, he wasn't loosening up. He did rounds of physical therapy, but I did shockwave therapy on the lumps and scar tissue in his Achilles tendon. Within three to four months, he loosened right up. He was hiking again. He was wearing the right orthotics. He was stretching. That's how big of a difference it can make. And then strengthening everything. I love Pilates. So Pilates are excellent. So there's a lot of great Pilates courses up there, but as you start to get your flexibility back, start to strengthen a little bit as well. That can make a big, big difference. And then the last thing you want to do is keep following up your podiatrist. If you're in the Michigan area, come see us. We'll get you time off. We'll write you scripts. We'll get you handicap parking passes. And that's one thing I forgot to mention is get yourself a handicap parking pass. A podiatrist can fill that out for you. It could be up to six months or more with a significant injury. I put some people on it permanently, but that makes a huge difference for you. We want to make sure you're doing better. If you have any questions, please ask below. We love to interact with our fans in a general way, of course. And if you need more help, Tell us what topics you need. Watch this video if your pain's not getting better. Give us a like and give a subscribe. We appreciate it.